Android games devs. I've been making games long enough to remember the days when I could just spend a year in production, spin off a gold master, and kick a game out the door to start focusing on something new. But this just isn't the case anymore. Especially in the mobile space, you'll be competing with literally hundreds of new games every day. To be successful and stand out in the crowd, you need a really awesome game that your fans love and will keep talking about long after you click that publish button. That is, you need some way to be able to operate your game once it's live. But this can be a lot of work. First, you need to figure out what your players think of your game, what they like and don't like, where they're stuck, and how your game might improve. Then, you need to be able to roll out changes to your player base based on these insights and decide if you're going to keep them. And this needs to happen fast, which can be challenging for C++ and Unity developers who can't just publish new code to their servers at a whim. This is why I'm here talking about Firebase, a development platform that helps game developers build games with backend tools like Firebase Real-Time Database and Authentication, release games with live monitoring tools like Crashlytics and Analytics, and operate games with tools like Remote Config and A-B Testing, which I'll be talking about today. So let's see how I can monitor the behavior of my live player base, roll out a change, and measure how successful that change is, all with free tools in the Firebase suite. I found this really cool demo project for a mobile game and started building on top of that. If you want to follow along at home, there's a link in the description below. I've made a couple of changes already. I added a quick title screen where I initialize Firebase. That way I can ensure that check and fix dependencies async was called before I used Firebase features. This includes remote config. And I log an event when a user dies with how many points they've earned and how long the round took. I've already hooked up Google Analytics via the Firebase SDK, and this is my analytics dashboard. I can see key stats such as my daily user engagement, retention reports, I'd even be able to see my revenue reports here if I had AdMob set up. I also have Game Over event with the data I'm logging on player death. Of course, if this is all new to you, you should check out this Getting Started video for Google Analytics and Unity. I cover how to log events, how to track key performance indicators, and way more about this analytics dashboard. Thanks to this data, I can see how my players are doing and build a hypothesis about how to improve my game. For example, here I see that players are playing for 6 to 12 seconds and not getting much more than one point on average. Maybe they'll stick around longer if I gave them really big scores. And if they stick around longer, maybe I'll be able to make some money with super cool in-app purchases I have planned, like the chicken launcher. If I'm going to start testing my hypothesis, I need more control and faster iteration times than I'd get from just submitting this to the App Store. So I'll pull in something called Firebase Remote Config. You may be asking, what is Firebase Remote Config? Really, it's just a very bandwidth efficient key value store that lives in the cloud. And it has fairly robust controls over which users get which pieces of data you'll generally want to pull most tweakable and configurable bits of gameplay into it. So let's do that. First, I'll add the Remote Config Unity SDK. Now, most of the interesting bits in the sample are in a class called Game Control. So I'll open that up. And here I have Scroll Speed. That is how fast the game goes. And Score++ and Bird Scored for how many points I get. Let's Remote Configify this. First, I'll make serializable private fields for both the score and the scroll speed. Then, I'll make constants for what their keys will be in remote config. At the end of a wait, I'll create a dictionary with each of these values and use that to set the defaults. At this point, I have values configurable in the Unity Editor. 
By making a couple of public accessors that call get value on remote config, the game is right back to where it was when I started, but with extra steps. First, I want to verify that nothing changed. And now it's time to hook up the magic. That is, I'll call fetch async so these local defaults can be replaced with server values. To activate the fetch values, I'll call activate fetch on the main thread when this completes. If I want to get crafty, I might hold on to this until the end of the frame to make sure everyone's operating on the same data, or even wait until a scene changes so nothing changes on players mid game. I know that at this point, you're dying to see how you can push a change down from the server like I promised. But something to be cautious about is that remote config has the potential to push a change live to all of your players. One way to lock down a change to specific players would be to use user properties in Google Analytics. User properties let you categorize your players based on criteria of your choosing. So you might set a property for when users reach a certain level, to identify certain players as admins or GAs, or to save what a player's favorite food is. It's really important to know whether or not an affinity for waffles is correlated with higher scores, right? In the case of remote config, I'll be able to deliver certain configurations to players who match a qualifying criteria based on a user property. Just be a little cautious with user properties you only get 25 of these per project, so you probably don't want to give each of your developers their own property. Note that until this point in this video, everything I've done has been testable in the Unity editor. Analytics will be the exception though, and since recent versions of Unity no longer support the Android emulator, anything involving analytics has to be run on a physical Android device. The upside though, is that thanks to remote config, once I get the integration working, I can test gameplay changes on a game that's physically running, potentially actually improving your iteration times despite this restriction. This is one reason why I moved everything interesting into game control and remote config. So if I go back to game control, I'm going to use debug.isDebugBuild to determine if I'm developing the game. First, I'll create a constant string for my developer user property. And I'll jump over to the Firebase dashboard, select user properties, and copy paste it here too. Then I'll set the user property to match is debug mode. Remember that since I only get 25 of these, if I want each developer on my team to have their own config values, I would want to use a single user property with a string or ID, rather than making an individual boolean per developer. If this is a debug build, I'll also set Firebase Remote Config Settings Is Developer Mode to True, so I can pull down data quickly. Finally, this is a debug build. I'll drop the update time span to zero. This will allow me to make as many fetch calls as I need when developing, which will be important for tuning these values. Typically in production, you'll want to update your data once every 12 hours or so. It will cap out at something like one update per hour, but up to 10 developers on your account can retrieve data as frequently as needed. So now my game is set up to change the point values based on a remote config setting and we'll update this as frequently as needed in development mode. Let's go put up some test data. If I build and run this on device, I should see that I'm still getting one point per pillar. So I'll go into the remote config dashboard, can copy my default values up here if I like, but since this will replace whatever I have set up in the editor, I'll only do that as needed. There's also some sample code in the Firebase extended repo that you can use to set remote config values right in the Unity editor. I'll put a link in the description below. So I'll create a condition for developer mode. And for developer, 
I'll set the score to something big, like 100. You get 100 points per pillar. And also one point for normal players. And publish. I'll make sure I switch to the development build if that's not already configured. I'll launch my game and see those changes instantly on device. I can even add a button to make fetch happen if I want. That's so fetch. If you recall, my hypothesis at the beginning of this video was that players in my game would like it better if they had bigger scores. So now that I can update scoring on the fly, I need some metric to say, hey, they do like it better. I think that I will want to see an increase in my two to three day user retention. That's one of those metrics that I just get for free after integrating Google Analytics. So let's do some science. Naively, I can apply a remote configuration to some percent of my player base, but we can do better. Firebase actually has a product called AB Testing. I'll just scratch the surface here, but check out our AB Test Like a Pro series to really dig in. Link in the description below. Here, I can create an experiment to measure if more points leads to better retention. I'll say that I'll want to use remote config. I'll name the experiment bigger is better and add a description like bigger numbers are likely to increase user retention. I'll target players in my Android game, say 5% of them. And I could have an activation event that's required to qualify a player for this test, but that doesn't apply here. My goal will be to drive up two to three day retention. And you can see that it pulled in four to seven day retention automatically, as well as a metric measuring my game stability as secondary metrics. My control will be my current default, a score per pillar value of one. My variant will be a score of a hundred. I'll review and accept this experiment and wait some time for data to start rolling in. So for a normal game, now I'd be able to roll out my test to my player base and see how it's received. Unfortunately, this is a small demo game that I've made just for this video. To use A-B testing effectively, you'll need a sizable number of testers in order to have a reasonable amount of confidence that the test results will scale. 5% of this player base might not even pull in one person, and I already know that I want a bigger score. Luckily, we have this game Bingo Blast running live and we've done a few A-B tests of our own against the player base. So let's take a look at this test that we call Rewards and Ad Revenue. Basically, Bingo Blast has something called Rewarded Ads. These are ads that a player can optionally watch in lieu of spending real money in order to earn some premium currency. Balancing the amount of currency you give a player can be difficult. Too much and you risk sacrificing in-app purchase revenue. But if you don't reward enough, your players won't bother to sit through the short video and you'll lose potential ad revenue from non-paying customers. The thing about this test is that I've been in this meeting. We're trying to balance various methods by which players can earn or buy in-game currency. Without testing, you're just gambling with your game's future and with the literally hundreds of design and engineering hours you've spent getting to this point. But thanks to A-B testing, we have another option. If I expand the details here, you see that our hypothesis is that giving a player more chips, that is, more premium currency, will encourage them to seek out rewarded ads and drive up our estimated ad mob revenue. That is, we'll make more money from ads. I also want to see what happens to our four to seven day retention. It's useful to know if somehow our game gets crashy. And I want to see what happens to our total revenue. Remember that the balance I want to strike is that I don't want to break our holistic monetization strategy by giving away too many chips to non-paying players. The target audience is 25% of our Android users, and we're splitting that 50-50 between the control group, who gets 10 chips per ad, and the experiment, with 20 chips per ad. Of course, the results are already spoiled by the headline, but down here, in the improvement overview, I see that we're significantly increasing our ad mob revenue. Four to seven day retention is also up. More users are actually crash free, although I don't quite know why. And the total revenue is up a slight tick. For our Android users at least, 
I can say with science that 20 chips per rewarded ad is the way to go. But an important note, this video is about improving your live operations, not the best way to monetize your game. Remember that your audience may have different preferences than ours, and that the willingness to watch an ad versus spending money may depend on platform, region, or some other selector. So don't just lift these numbers, even if 20 chips is something meaningful in your game, but run this experiment yourself. The tools I used here are all freely available from the Firebase suite. That means that at no backend cost to you, but with a few minutes of coding, your engineers can build a powerful live remote deployment system into your game that helps even non-technical decision makers interact with your living player base. This doesn't just stop at testing though. You can use this to slowly roll out new features, nerf that power up that analytics indicates is a little OP, or even as a quick and dirty way to set up a double XP weekend. And since this is all configurable in the Firebase console, you're not stuck waiting for your engineering team to cut a new build, even for that spur of the moment XP event. Once you have the proper remote config hooks implemented, it's just a matter of setting the correct keys in the remote config dashboard or using the admin SDK to tie into your own bespoke tooling. That's all I have time for today. If you'd like to learn more about Firebase, check out our YouTube channel, link in the description below or follow at Firebase on Twitter. There's also a playlist for all of our Unity videos also linked in the description. And don't forget to let me know what you're building, either in the comments below or at Puckstore on the Twitter. So long and have a wonderful time.